So this is the diagram that many, many people have seen. So the problem is sometimes that people assume that what you're looking at on the screen right now is Christy M. Uh, to, to rephrase your comment site, perhaps we could say, there's Christy M and then there's Christy M. Okay. <laughs> anyway. uh, so here's getting back to that trend that I mentioned a moment ago, trend number two, if you all recall, was that people tend to arrive with less stats experience and more coding experience. Now, if you're an R person, you might think, well, Keith, it's hard for me to differentiate between the two. Is an R a stats language? But I, I think it will, it will make more sense as I talk about this trend. Um, what I was saying is that people that would be kind of your SPSS and SAS crowd, I've already told you somewhat my background, the, the risk was some years ago that there'd be so much emphasis, I think appropriate emphasis, but maybe sometimes too much, on business understanding, data understanding, and data preparation leading up to modeling. So for instance, I generally will suggest that as a rule of thumb, that let's say I'm doing a 16 week project or a 20 week long project. I hit the modeling phase about 80% of the way in. So if I'm doing a 20 week project, I'm doing modeling about week 16 or 17. Okay, now you can see the problem, right? If you're within an organization where you're doing agile, how are you gonna make that work, right? If, if the way that Keith likes to run a project is, I'm not gonna build, the, I'm not gonna build any models, you know, when I mean models, the kind of model that I'm gonna deploy, that doesn't mean I'm not experimenting with the modeling algorithms. I mean, doing the serious work of building the model is week 16 or 17 out of 20, then what on earth are you doing during your stand-up meetings and every, you know, during your sprints up until then, right? You can see how this is a, an issue to reconcile. And I will tell you that I've talked to a lot of predictive modeling experts and a lot of agile experts, and everybody says, no problem. You know, you, you follow the phases and you do the sprints and you do agile, it's easy to reconcile the two. I know for a fact it is more difficult than you might guess to reconcile the two because I recently had a two or three hour event. It was actually a lot of fun. It was right here in North Carolina. It was in Research Triangle Park. There's a huge Red Hat office here, Cisco, IBM. There's a, just a 20 minutes from where I'm presenting today. There are a ton of high tech headquarters. It's kind of like a mini, it's not as big as Silicon Valley, but I bet a number of you have heard of Research Triangle Park. There's a lot of headquarters here. So much so there used to be direct flights between here and San Jose all the time, bringing people back and forth between Research Triangle Park and Silicon Valley. Somewhat less flying uh, at the moment. But uh, the point of all that is we got together and we had a big group. We had about 50 people in the room. This was just a few weeks ago, by the way, just before uh, people started staying home within two weeks really of that happening. And we talked about it for two or three hours and we found that it was actually pretty tough to honor both at the same time. Now this doesn't mean that you choose between one or the other because I'm not sure that's something we'd be allowed to do anymore. But it means there are some things to learn from these decades of experience in building these predictive models that somehow we have to find a, a way to reconcile with agile. And when I say this is a trend, I don't mean it's a trend towards away from good and towards bad or vice versa. I mean, we're right in the middle of it right now. We're right in the thick of it right now and people have not figured this out, even though we say it's easy. When people say it's easy, it's usually because they're just at this surf surface level of the phases. And they think that business understanding is just kind of the statement of the problem. It's a lot more than that. It's the translation of the business problem into a form that the modeling is capable of. And data prep is a huge issue as well. And I'm gonna talk at length about data prep because there's a reason why data prep is 60% of the time. And it's not because it's a burden to be overcome that technology can help us with. It's there are important reasons why data prep takes 60% of the time. And even though as technology advances, it's still 60% of the time. Okay, so.